So the other kinds of hybrid orbitals that uh, we would make would be named after the regions of electron density that are being extended or the, uh, the atomic orbitals that are hybridized to form that hybrid orbital. So if I had a central atom here, central atom, and you know, this looks kind of confusing and sounds confusing. Yes, it does. But it's, it's actually not too bad. All you have to do is look at your central atom and count how many regions of electron density are extending. Again, bonding or non-bonding. And if you see, for example, three regions of electron density extending, then you know that that atom there had to combine three of its atomic orbitals, which one was an S, and then two of them were P's. And so it extended those three hybrid orbitals, and those three hybrid orbitals are going to be called what do you think? What are we going to call these hybrid orbitals? Uh, sp3? No, because we're only combining an s and two p's this time, right? Because I only needed three extensions, therefore I only needed three atomic orbitals. So sp2? That's right, sp2. If I have a central atom with two regions of electron density being extended, then what are the name of those hybrid orbitals? sp. Very good. So it's very straightforward. Really, all you have to do is look at the regions of electron density. And if I look at my oxygen here, how many regions of electron density? Around it? Yeah, how many regions around the oxygen? Four. That's right. Two non-bonding and two bonding. So if it's four regions, that, mean we, that means we can say oxygen is sp3 hybridized because there were four regions extended and I needed to combine an s and three p's together on that oxygen atom to extend four regions. Very good. What about this? If I have this compound here, all right, looking at the carbon, what's the hybridization around the carbon? The hybridization? Yeah, what's the name of the hybrid orbitals that are extending from this carbon? Um. There's three regions, so it must be S and two P's, SP2. Very good. That's exactly right. So all you have to do is count the regions and make sure the number of S and P orbitals, atomic orbitals that came together, uh, matches the, the number of extensions that are coming from that central atom. Okay, very good. So again, our SP hybrid orbitals, whether it's SP2, SP3, uh, whatever they are, they're going to have this same look where they have large lobes and then a smaller lobe, which is here you can't see underneath there. Uh, SP2, sorry, SP hybridization here, right? Just two reason, regions. SP3 hybridization, SP2 hybridization, sorry, for three regions. And SP3 hybridization for four regions. All right. So here's an example. Bonding in CH4, right? The carbon has four regions extending from that carbon, so we say that this carbon is sp3 hybridized. Tetrahedral in shape still, 109.5 degrees. So all we've added is a little bit of understanding of what these shapes are of the orbitals and a recognition that the atom is actually shifting when it's electron density around, not from atomic orbitals, but now what we call um, molecular orbitals, to a degree, um, these hybrid orbitals are behaving to accommodate the formation of this molecule. Okay, so in this compound here, what is the expected hybridization on the oxygen? The oxygen? Yeah, it's the red one. Oh, oh, oh let's see, uh, four regions of electron density, right? That's right, that's what you look at. You look at how many regions of electron density are extended from the oxygen. Two are bonding and two are non-bonding, so four regions. So how does that help us with the hybridization? Well, that means that the oxygen had to use four atomic orbitals, the S and three P's, to get uh, those hybrid orbitals extended. So it's SP3 hybridized. Very good. Now, um, an even simpler way to think about this is you count the regions of electron density around the atom of interest, four, and then you make sure that whatever your hybridization is, it has four uh, orbitals in it. So this has one S and three P's, that's, that's four, okay? 
All right, so identify the hybrid orbitals in the following based on their Vesper geometry. So this boron here, what is the hybridization around that boron? Uh, four regions, so that's sp3. Very good. Around that nitrogen? Four regions, sp3. Very good. How about this carbon right here? Uh, three regions, so that's s and two p's, sp2. Very good. How about this oxygen right here? Also three regions, sp2. Very good. You're getting it. How about this oxygen here? Uh, they don't show the lone pairs, but I, I, they have to be there, right? Very good. They have to be there, and that's why you're seeing this bend. So that means there's four regions. Okay, so sp3. Excellent job. Now, just like we could have expanded octets for certain um, Lewis dot structures, we can have expanded octets for um, hybridization, expanded octets for hybridization. And if we need to pick up a d orbital, so if, for example, if we need five regions of electron density, we'll have s, the three p's, and one d, or sp3d hybrid orbitals. If we need an octet, octahedral, sorry, and we need to extend six regions of electron density, it'll be called sp3d2 hybrids. Very good. Now, there are two different bonding types that we want to try to become familiar with. These bonding types are um, called sigma and pi bonding, sigma and pi bonding. And these names come from the kind of hybrid orbitals or the kind of overlap between the different orbitals. So if we have an overlap between two S bonds, so two S uh, um, orbitals, we call it a, a sigma, S for sigma, sigma bond. If it's a bond between two uh, P orbitals, like this, it's also called a sigma bond. If it's a bond between two hybrid orbitals, like that, also called a sigma bond. Okay, All of these are called sigma bonds because it's essentially saying that a large portion of the lobe, one side of the lobe, or not necessarily only one side, but a large portion of the lobe is overlapping with the other portion of the lobe. Also, with these sigma bonds, if I take any one of these atoms on either side and spin them, it does not decrease the amount of um, interaction that there is in that bond. The interaction is the same. In a, a pi bond, two p orbitals are overlapping with each other with overlap on top and above and below the plane of where the atoms are. So you see that these two are two p orbitals? Yeah. The top overlaps a little bit and the bottom overlaps a little bit and so we call this a pi bond for p bond. So it's not just the fact that it's overlapping p orbitals, it's that the p orbital lap are p orbitals are overlapping with two lobes. Now this is a problem if you try to rotate this atom or this atom over here, right? If you rotate that, what's it going to do? Uh, is it going to ruin that bond? Yes, it will. And so to keep that bond from being ruined, these atoms will not rotate. So you have sigma bonds that can rotate and pi bonds that do not rotate. All right? And let's try to figure out exactly how these pi and sigma bonds um, result. If I have a carbon-carbon bond, oops, let's try that again, carbon-carbon bond with two hydrogens coming off of the end of each of those carbons, right? Well, what's going on here? This, what's the hybridization of that carbon? Do you know? Uh, let's see, three regions? Yeah, three regions. So sp2? That's right. sp2 hybridization around that carbon. Three regions of electron density. So that carbon is taking its s and two p orbitals, right? s and two of the p orbitals, combining them together and extending 
three of these sp2 hybrid orbitals. All right, but there was a p orbital that was left behind, a p orbital that was left behind because it only took two of the three p orbitals, and that p orbital that's left behind is still here. It's getting kind of blurry and hard to see, but they have kind of a better picture of it here. Here you can see the purple sp3 hybrid orbitals extending. One extends across to the other carbon, one extends out to this hydrogen, and one extends out to this hydrogen. And the red one there is the free p orbital. You see that? Yeah, I can see it. And so the overlap here between two of these sp2 hybrid orbitals is called a sigma bond. Okay. But the free p orbitals also overlap above and below the plane to form that second bond. So in this molecule, right now let's redraw it for ourselves. The one of the carbon carbon bonds is a sigma bond where it's an overlap between the sp2 hybrid orbitals, but the other one is a p bond where it's an overlap between um, two p orbitals above and below the plane. And so the result is when you have a double bond, the double bond cannot rotate. There's not free rotation here. This is an example of a single bond, right? What kind of overlap is this single bond? What do you mean? Well, the carbon is extending what kind of orbital here? Three regions, that's sp2. Very good, the carbon is extending an sp2, and the hydrogen is extending what? The hydrogen just has the 1s, right? Yes, hydrogen has a 1s, carbon extending an sp2 hybrid, and that overlap there is a sigma bond, therefore you can have rotation. The hydrogen could rotate, and this bond will not be compromised. Same with one of these bonds, but the other bond is an overlap between, as we see here, these free p orbitals, and therefore it's a pi bond and it can't overlap. So if we wanted to know how many sigma bonds there were in this molecule, could you tell me that? How many sigma bonds? How many sigma bonds? Yeah. Well, you said the carbon-hydrogen bond was sigma, right? That's right. This is a sigma bond. So there's four of those. And did you say one of the carbon-carbon bonds was a sigma bond? That's right. So a total of five sigma bonds and one pi bond. All right, that pi bond is again an overlap between what? Between two of those p orbitals. That's right, the free p orbital there. Very good. So, same thing here with a carbon-carbon triple bond. What's the hybridization around that carbon in this carbon-carbon triple bond, in this compound here? What's the hybridization around this one or that one? Both of them are the same. What is it? Well, there's two regions of electron density, right? That's right. This counts as one region, and this counts as one region. So, sp hybrid? That's right. The carbon is extending two sp hybrid orbitals. Then what are those other two bonds in there? Are those pi bonds? That's right. They are pi bonds. The free pi p orbitals, one going up and down, let's say, and one going right and left, results in overlap above and below and to the right and to the left of the plane of the carbon-carbon bond. And those two pi bonds result in that triple bond. Again, one being an overlap between the sp hybrid and the other two being an overlap of these sigma bonds. Or sorry, of these pi bonds. Pi orbitals. Overlap of these pi orbitals. So, can that bond rotate? No, you can't rotate a pi bond. Very good. You can't rotate a pi bond because it's an overlap above and below the plane or to the right and to the left of the plane of the, the atoms. And there's electron density overlapping on both sides, preventing rotation. Okay, very good. So, look at this compound down here. As, well, yeah, let's look at this compound down here. Tell me, how many... Uh, pi bonds do you see in this? Uh, the double bonds each count as pi bonds, right? That's right. So two? That's right, two pi bonds. One of these carbon-oxygen bonds is a pi bond, 
and one of these carbon-carbon bonds as a pi bond. Now, how many sigma bonds do you see in here? Uh, the carbon-hydrogen bonds, for sure. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six of those. And the carbon-carbon bonds that aren't double? That's right. Seven, eight. And then one of the carbon-carbon double bonds is one. Nine. And then one of the carbon-oxygen bonds. Ten. Very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now, how about this molecule here? This is our CH3CO2H. How many pi bonds are there in this molecule? Um, just one. Yes, just one. Fabulous job. Okay, good job. Nice working with you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next semester, right? That's it? That's it. That's all we're going to go over in Chapter 10. Good job. Oh, thank you. It was good working with you. You're very handsome. Uh, you're just saying that. You're right, I am. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.